Hello everyone, this is Jacqueline from Long Arming by Jacqueline. A while back, I had done a top five Friday video about um, five reasons, five ways to do a false back on a quilt. So I am using what I call the pillow flip binding method. And it's one of those versions of a false back that goes on here. Um, you can do this method before quilting or after quilting. Um, so I'm doing it before quilting in this instance, but it works just the same. So if I had a back that had a very specific design and I didn't want the same quilting on the front to show on the back, this is one way that I could quilt two of the layers together, the um, batting with either the top or back, and then join them in this manner and then I've got a false back and then I can do um, minimal quilting that will show both on the front and back just to tack those layers together. So we're here on the design floor in the studio. Let's take a look. So here is my small quilt top. It's quite small. Um, I say mine. This is one that I'm finishing for a customer. It's 44 inches squared so it's quite a petite little girl. Beautiful soft colors. A lot of this is hand sewn, um, really lovely. Here is my little soft green backing. It's just a solid, so it's the same on both sides. But if it were a print, this would be pretty side up. And then on the bottom, I have my batting. And I've cut my batting just a little bit big, and that will be trimmed later. And then I am also, I don't know if you can see right there. Um, I have made the label for the quilt and that will be cut in the edge as well. So I am doing this particular quilt um, with this method before quilting. And so what is going to happen? Oh, you know what? It was the false back video. We might reshoot that intro. So I'm hard to do with one hand. I'm just going to take this top and align it to the back, and the top and the back are exactly the same size. So I'm just gonna align this and then pin all the way around. So in this particular instance, um, I'm doing this prior to quilting, but I could have quilted this batting to the top or back, and then I would really have two layers, and the method from there on is exactly the same. You can also base the batting to one of the layers using any method you like. I prefer spray base, but you could do a fusible, especially in a smaller quilt like this. You could pin, you could stitch, whatever floats your boat. So by basting your batting to one of the layers, it sort of distills this down to two things that you need to manage and handle instead of three layers. So here we are at the design floor, and here's our tiny quilt. And I have just matched the backing to the top raw edge and pin all the way around. I'm gonna take this to the regular domestic sit down machine and do a quarter inch seam all the way around. And I'm gonna leave myself a gap for this quilt, maybe um, eight inches or so, so that I can flip it inside out and turn it right side out, <laughs> if that makes sense. Alright, so I have just brought the little sandwich over to my machine. I started, I did a little back tack, and I like to mark with two pins where I begin and end. So as I am zipping my way around, I don't um, lose my spot and accidentally can come all the way back to the beginning and just close it, which I have done before. So two pins is start and stop in Jacqueline code. And I did decide to go ahead and use a 3 8 foot just to give me a little bit more secure seam allowance. And I'm just going to zip this all around and see you after that. Okay, so I've taken my seam and removed all of my pins. Be sure to do a back tack at the beginning and the end because when you turn through this opening, it's going to put a little bit of stress here and you don't want that sort of tearing back. The next step is to just trim away the excess batting. And if you had excess backing or anything else, that gets trimmed away. And then in the corners, I will trim away the excess batting as before, but also come and align my ruler with the seam, a few threads out from the seam, 
and take a little diagonal chunk off of that corner. And that allows when you flip your corner to have a nice crisp point. So I nipped away from the corners and trimmed flush all the way around. And this is my turning opening that I have left. And what I'm going to do to help myself out later is press it back so the fold is right here where the stitching is. So that when I flip it, these will already be sort of neatly turned in. I'll let the heat of the iron pre-train that crease where I need it to be. So at the edges, it's just going to look like I am pressing this seam open, transitioning from the sewn part to the open part. And that will make sure I'm folded in the right amount and I have a nice smooth transition from my old seam to my new seam. Nicely pressed top and bottom. Now we flip. So I've flipped her right side out and I've taken my little pokey tool. This one happens to be the quick clip, which is used for opening and closing safety pins, but it's got a nice rounded point and I poke out those corners nice as you want. And then you can also go along the seam and sort of scrape it on the inside or some people roll it from the outside to make sure that this seam is fully opened and you get a nice straight crisp edge instead of having some like more tucked in and some more fully opened out. Um, yeah. And here is my opening already sort of trained to roll inward with the little creasing I did with the iron. So after I scrape this seam open from the inside, I'm just gonna run my fingernail all the way around the inner seam. I'm gonna go ahead and press this to make sure it's nice and flat and crisp the way I want it. So what I've done here is open up this seam and I'm gonna press from the outside the same way you would roll back your seam allowance. I'm doing this one-handed, sorry. Um, when you are piecing, to ensure you have a fully open, crisp seam as you go along. So you just sort of arrange it, make sure you have a nice flat single layer underneath, and then you're rolling back your top. So here we are, pressing finished. And although that pressing step, pressing this open, is a little bit extra, it does give a nice, crisp, professional finish, which I like. So the next step is um, to do some top stitching around the edge. So this is going to have sort of a shadow border. I'm going to um, top stitch this closed with basically an edge stitch right at the edge. And then I'm going to come in a distance and go around again and give a nice neat edge. And the reason for that is I want to be able to give the look of a border, but also mount this into the long arm and I won't be able to quilt all the way to a fully finished edge. So it gives me a little something to grip onto and take a quilt pattern to a nice straight point. So I'm here edge stitching at the machine and I've reached my tag and I think what I've decided to do is hand stitch this outer edge down once the quilt is complete. But if you are catching anything in your edge, such as a fringe or a prairie point or your quilt label, you can sort of smooth that out and push back on the top and bottom and continue your edge stitch with this out. And then even with that little bit of basically under stitching, you'll be able to lay that down to the back and stitch it down if you are so inclined. So if you don't want this flapping out away from the quilt and you'll be ending up tucking it under, which is what I'll be doing, I would continue that little edge stitch right down across this. And there we have our first round of edge stitching all the way around. 